Howdy folks. So I have two uh, compact fluorescent lights here. Um, this one has been in my hallway for uh, quite a number of years and as you can see by the uh, lovely yellow discoloration of the plastic this thing has gotten quite hot and uh, been on for quite a few hours. And this bulb is basically brand new. I bought it about a year ago uh, but it's in a like a, a lamp and it really doesn't get much use at all so it's basically new and these bulbs are both by the same company um, and they're they're basically uh, the, this is basically the continuation of this bulb so they're made by this company that goes by the name of Blue Planet um, I don't know who this is I don't know if this is a real company or if this is just some sort of name that slapped on somebody else's product because this is carried by um, Canadian Tire or as I, I like to call them crappy tire in Canada um, because Canadian Tire doesn't sell anything Canadian anymore it's all 100% Chinese crap um, it's an awful store uh, but they carry all this Blue Planet branded stuff including these light bulbs and this was I don't know how many years ago maybe like three or four years ago maybe at the oldest and this thing was probably 2013 I'm gonna say um, probably when I bought it so I just thought I would take these apart and we can see how how this one's fared but I wanna see kind of the design changes that they've made to go from this to this and they've obviously made changes either to improve longevity uh, reduced manufacturing cost, um, 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 you know, component availability. Uh, the design will have changed, uh, so I just wanted to compare the two, and uh, we'll we'll see what's different. Obviously, the first thing you'll notice is the coils. Um, the coil size has changed. This is very thin tubing, whereas this is very thick tubing. And uh, the bulbs are, I mean, they're basically the same height. the The newer bulb is tiny, tiny bit higher maybe by about a centimeter or so um, the base on the old unit is much larger not only is it uh, a bit taller but in terms of diameter it's uh, also much larger this one here uh, 23 watts 4100 Kelvin uh, 1600 lumens it's a it's a 23 watt bulb um, CRI greater than 80, they even put that on there. The new bulb has far less information than the old one. Um, 23 watt, 1600 lumens. Uh, the power consumption is the same. Uh, actually, no, it's not. Uh, 348 milliamps to 390 milliamps. So that's interesting. They both say 23 watts. I wonder what that is if I do the math. Interesting. So the current consumption has actually gone up. You'll notice that they've added some holes here on the new bulb, whereas the old bulb was totally sealed on the top. So I'm assuming that's probably for ventilation and to avoid this happening. This bulb makes a horrible buzzing noise when it starts up, and that's obviously the, uh, the coil when it's cool. It obviously uh, vibrates, and uh, that's very annoying so the reason why I took this out is because I want to replace it with this bulb not because this one doesn't work but just because I, I, that no buzzing noise is super fucking annoying now I'd like to open this without shattering this and making a hazmat situation because this bulb of course does contain mercury and of course I also want to keep the bulb in working order because it does still work and I may put it outside on my porch or something you know, for it to live out its last final days because I don't see this thing lasting very much longer given its current condition. And I'm not entirely sure the best way to open these. Uh, I know it's clipped together, but I want to be somewhat careful with this. I don't care if I make it look nasty because, I mean, it's pretty nasty as it is already. So I think I will uh, work on this and then I'll, uh, I'll come back when I've opened it up. Okay, so I've managed to open the first old bulb. This was really challenging to get open. I was very surprised as to 
how strong. You can see how much I've actually had to dig out of the clip before it could even get the driver under it. They've got a very thick lip here, uh, which, I mean, it, make, it makes it hard to open. I, I wonder why it's so thick. Um, it's possible they just wanted this to stick together really well. Um, I'm used to the really cheap Chinese things that, you know, barely hold themselves together at all. It's also possible they put this lip on here uh, as sort of blast protection in the event that something goes horribly wrong in here. It doesn't, uh, I mean, it doesn't shoot flames out the side. Sort of almost what they do with multimeters where they overmold things. Uh, I wonder, I don't know. Maybe I'm just thinking way too much into it. Anyway, um, way, way down in the end there, uh, there's a little plastic uh, ring which basically sort of holds the wire uh, that runs down to the uh, the end cap on, it, which I think is kind of interesting. And then they've got just another wire which runs, uh, it's pinched under here to the, uh, the side. Um, you'll notice there's a bulge in that cable and that's actually our, uh, our fusible resistors in there. And I mean, it's it's very very standard topology. Um, it's sort of the thing that everyone's already seen. So we've got um, let's see. Okay, so I mean, it's the basic topology. So we've we've got some uh, some caps. We've got this is our uh, our main uh, smoothing cap, and uh, they've done the the normal sort of thing where they try to get it as far off the board as possible away from all the heat and they stuff it up into the into the base here um, you can see they've only put um, sleeving on one of the two leads uh, which is a I mean I guess it works but it's kinda cheap normally I'd see it on both leads but uh, I guess it's better than no leads um, we've got our switching transistors here uh, for our uh, DC to DC uh, boost converter, got a diac there, little transformer, little inductor there, another inductor, um, and then of course you've got the electrode connections for the tube on both sides. And uh, because of those connections, I'm not going to take the board out because I'd have to un unwrap all of those. And uh, there's probably just a bridge rectifier on the other side, maybe. I don't. I don't expect there to be much on the other side. Most of the heat is generated by the actual, uh, the the ba the the tube right here, because that's where the electrodes are. But it's also possible that that of course this stuff in here does get hot too. So I guess uh, none of this really means anything until we look at the other bulb and we do the comparison. So I'd love to see how easy it is to get this thing open compared to that one. Um, now I've already started to open this just so that I could save some time. So it came open quite a bit easier than this one. Um, it, it, it wasn't of course as easy as that. I, as you can see I'd broken the, the base when I just tried to put it back together so I could show you opening it. but. It wasn't uh, it, it wasn't n nearly as, as bad as the other one to get it open. So you can see here uh, we've got the same plastic insert down there. It's not white this time, it's black. It's, a, it's identical insert. They've pinched the wire in the exact same place. They've got the same fusible resistor in there. Now our cap has changed. Um, the old bulb has an Aishi brand, never heard of it. 105 degrees C, uh, 22 mic at 200 volts, and our new cap uh, is basically, you know, I mean the specs are the same, 200 volt, 22 mic, 105 degrees C, but it's got HX brand on it, so I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I, it, it's probably one of those situations where they go to the Shenzhen market that week, find whoever can make the cheapest cap at the right specs, they buy that for that production run, and then you know the next production run they just go out and find the next cap and it's one of those kinds of things where you know every production run has different components in it and I don't really like that uh, I mean I'm not saying that's what this is but generally 
that's sort of something you, you come to expect and it's not great because there's not a lot of there's a lot of variance between the different production runs and uh, you can you can get good products and bad products and you know the manufacturer hasn't really tested the product with that particular component so who knows what the life is going to be like and and all that it just it gets really nasty they've heat they've actually put the um, it's not heat shrink but they've got the uh, the the fiber sleeves on both of the leads this time so the quality has gone up that's interesting um, the topology looks basically identical I mean we've got our uh, our transformer our inductor the two uh, switching uh, devices we've got uh, all the caps in this one are green we've got an inductor um, you can actually sort of see underneath the board in this one um, the rectifier seems to be made up of uh, discrete surface mount diodes on this one so uh, I bet this one is probably very similar it's obviously not through hole because we'd be able to see the leads so it's definitely a, uh, a surface mount job on the other side of this as well so of course the board area has changed it's a a smaller board and uh, I'm just trying to look at component count here see if they've managed to remove any components so this green cap is probably the same as this blue cap and this green is probably this one here So I'm seeing one less, one less uh, orange drop cap on the new one versus the old one. It's not to say that it's not on the bottom, but I don't see anything like that on the bottom. So they may have managed to get away with that. The transformer has, or uh, not the transformer, the, uh, yes, yeah, sorry, the, uh, the transformer has changed. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a bit smaller. Uh, obviously manufactured by a, a different company. It's an entirely different style. This one's got the uh, the ferrite running around it, and this one is a uh, this one's actually a very nice looking transformer. Let's see, actually, if there's any there's no dates or anything on this. Uh, the only real marking is that it says uh, ROHS up there, which means it's going to be wonderful lead free, high reliability solder. And uh, this one, it's got some markings on here, but uh, yeah, nothing that I can use. I wonder what that marking is. If anyone knows what that is, if that's some sort of manufacturing company or uh, I don't know, PC, whoever did the PCB layout or put that on the silk screen for a reason. It's not on the not on, on the old one and it's not on the case anywhere. So yeah, interesting. I I thought I'd uh, I thought I'd see a little bit more of a difference than this, but uh, given just how different they look from the outside, but I guess not. Anyway, thanks for watching.